Hello and welcome to our final regular season game. So this is Dented Shield Season 3, Week 7. Uh, well, my team, uh, my underworld team, the Set Crush Whirlers, are playing Sons of Mischief, who are our Norse team. So I have two Norse teams in the league. Uh, lost to the other Norse team a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think that was 2-0. Um, big difference in the teams is the other team had a Yeti. This team doesn't. Um, but otherwise pretty similarly built. Um, and I am defending first. Um, and I think I'm just swapping players around in this formation. I've got this formation saved, but not happy where people are placed. So I need to maybe save it again. Um, but yeah, so not that many advances on this team. A um, couple of leveled goblins now. Got a big hand goblin and an agility four goblin. This is the only agility four player in this league. Um, they have um, a block thrower. Um, it also has a, a niggling injury. Um, I have a backup thrower who's missing this game, so I've had injured throwers lots in this. Actually, the last two games I've, I've seen injuries to throwers. Um, niggling injury coming two weeks ago um, on this one. Um, but because I've had so few advances, I have no intention of firing this thrower just yet when I'm really lacking uh, improved players. Um, so he's vulnerable, but important. Um, only other advanced player I have is Mighty Blow and Claw on this Blitzer. This is the first game after picking up Claw. Um, and it's it's almost a shame it's against Norse because Claw has really limited use against Norse. If you're armor 7, it basically does nothing. So the only players um, Claw is going to affect are the Elf Werners on this team. So they are targets I'll be looking at every turn. Can I get two dice on an Elf Werner with this Blitzer? If I can't, I'll hit someone else. Um, but want to hit as many people as possible. Uh, with this player because I struggle to keep players on the pitch um, I need to try and even it up somehow um, but other than that um, we've got two linemen with no levels this blitz has no levels but he's on three points so I'd love to score a touchdown with him and then we've got three unleveled goblins on the line of scrimmage uh, and two unleveled goblins on the bench and that is where we are uh, the Norse um, I'm gonna see if I can get just just slight on pause see if I can get the uh, here we go run straight into the thing we haven't got the advance uh, all the skills back so we're gonna to have to look at them slowly um, there's lots of linemen on this team so there's one back here on four points so good candidate to score um we've got a, a move of five linemen here who i'd expect to see up on the line of scrimmage getting stuck in because at movement five if you're going to use him to protect the ball carrier he's going to struggle to keep up um, but if he's in the mix where his movement's not really going to matter i think he'll be more effective or just as effective as he would without the injury uh another lineman here uh, tackle lineman here so i probably expect to see a tackle lineman hitting goblins. Um, another tackle lineman there. So this one's perhaps perhaps ready to blitz and can reach this goblin. Um, I've wearing with no levels here. And this one is throwing the first block. Has three dice um, and has block. So three dice on a goblin. And we've got two guard berserkers. You can see them both popping up. And then two unleveled linemen, I think. Oh, diving tackle lineman. So tackle and diving tackle lineman are um, dangerous players. So ones I'll be looking out for. So dodge making that just a push. Uh, and then getting down at the second time of asking. And then two dice there. Block doing uh, doing the work. And then just rolling a pal there. So neither of the tackle linemen hitting goblins this turn. Um, we've got an off wearer of blitz in here. Uh, and that is a knockdown on that lineman. So if that had been a pushback the first one, the second second block would have been one dice. Um, because that goblin was unmarked and would have assisted. Shuffling around back here, and we'll go for the pickup, uh, which has failed, um, but successful on the reroll. And there's no getting at that ball for me this turn. Um, but what they have left me uh, is standing this goblin up gives me what I've been looking out for: two dice hit on and off where enough with my mighty blow claw blitzer. Um, and then the other blitzer here has potential for getting two dice on this off where as well. I just need to take out some of these assists. Um, which I will, I'm sure, be looking to do. Uh, double skulls for my first block. Uh, nice way to lead off, um, but then do get that. I'll down. Um, 
no armor break. I'm choosing not to follow up um, because he'd just be hit next turn and I want to protect this Blitzer. Uh, and a Troll Blitz uh, there, which is three dice, um, but just a pushback. And that does mean I can take out this assist and get two dice in the off wearer here. Which is another knockdown. So both off wearers knocked down by Blitzers. Um, but neither of them hurt. Um, and then my two uh, improved goblins who can be useful in their own right, both in here for protection. Um, be concerned about tackle linemen hitting them. So Frenzy helping to get around dodge uh, again there. Unlevel goblins down. Uh, we've got action back here. No, it's up there. So taking one dice blocks on my blitzer, uh, but both down space times, so no, nothing happens there. So a marker in there, and that will be two dice on that goblin. And push back and then knock down again. Uh, and again, no arm break. So, full carrier bringing it over here. And then we do have this, yeah, this is the movement 5 1. Who at the moment could keep up okay and go where, where the opposing coach wants him, but he, if, if the ball wants to move at full speed, he's going to struggle to keep up. Um, if he was over in the mix over here instead of one of, the other, one of these other linemen, he'd, he'd kind of be fine to, to just do that job. <clears throat> so two dice block from my thrower um, is a knockout, so that's the first removal we've had. And then a block from the troll on the diving tackle lineman, uh, results in a death, so uh, that puts Barry up to six points for the level, um, apostrophe keeps that lineman alive. Um, that's a good turn for me, two removals. Another two dice on the off Werner, uh, and another knockdown. Yeah, I think we're looking here at a two dice blitz. Uh, yeah, there's alignment on the off Werner. Another knockdown, and I've, I've created a space to push him into if I needed to, where he'd be a little bit less effective. So it's the third turn in a row, this Berserker's knocked this goblin over, uh, and first time he's got an armor broke, so I've been getting away with that. What's going on? <clears throat> I've got a on that goblin, so looking to create some space to move the ball into. Uh, just a push back. Three. So I have two dice on the ball here. Which I'm spotting because scaling players are movement seven. Um, I can I can get round here. So this lineman is just I'll just show you where the lineman goes. Um, yeah, he's just dropping in there for an assist on the ball. Um, so I was looking at potentially using a goblin to blitz, but the thrower can reach with a go for it. Um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then he's a go for it for there. This player can't assist because this blitz is uh, marking him. Um, so that's that's the two dice on the ball, but needs to go for it. Um, and because that's a riskier move, I'm doing some other stuff first. Um, I want him in there so neither of these can assist. I want another assist on the off wearer now, so I can build, set up that two dice on and off wearer that I was looking for. Um, chose not to push back there um, and take that both down because uh, they were my options. Um, if I push back, this throw wouldn't have been able to reach for his blitz. Um, so the off wearer would have been there. Throw wouldn't have been able to come through these squares without dodging. 
and I'll, I'll wait to do that. So he's coming through. Uh, let's have a go at the ball. Fail to go for it. Um, and then on the re-roll, uh, we see the first of quite a few um, double ones rolled in this game. Um, yeah, which was disappointing because that was a nice, a nice uh, two dice on the ball that I found there. Uh, and now the fight back begins from the north, so that's a that's a removal back, um, which is ten ten plays nine in my favour. Uh, and now nine plays nine, so that's an injured goblin, which is just a badly hurt, I think. Uh, yeah, it was a stunty stunty casualty, which is always a badly hurt. Goblin, uh, there's another knockout, so three removals in the turn there. Um, and then the game started to feel very familiar with being low on players. Um, but yeah, struggling, struggling to do much about it. So this um, hadn't used the blitz yet, the North, so I was expecting that to be the blitz and then the ball to, to run down there. But they're blitzing the troll with the off wearer. Um, Rerolling that and taking the both down. So could have taken the pushback and then had a one dice afterwards because um, this this one was still been a system. Um, decided to take the both down, um, which means the, the only action we're losing was this Lyman's. Um, but it does mean the Elfwerner really took a mighty blow hit, which stunned him. The troll didn't. Um, yeah, push, push back into one dice would probably have been my preference there. Which is still one in three that you're safely knocking the troll over uh, from that point. So Lyman's standing back up, that's a marker on the ball carrier, and then we have a blitz of dodge for two dice on the ball, um, and re-rolling into a pushback from the both down, which was no, no effect. Um, so this, this blitzer, while he hits hard and he's dangerous, um, has, has basically only managed to roll pushback so far, or at least no armour breaks. Um, but I have three players marking the ball carrier. Which means the Norse have to deal with that next turn, um, and they have to focus their attention on that. Uh, troll back on his feet, and then that's one dodge too many. I made a few dodges in that turn, uh, and that one probably quite rightly failing. I think that was the fourth dodge I made. Uh, and the first three plus roll that failed. So set up to get my thrower out of the way. down there. I still have two markers on the ball, um, which should probably be where their blitz is happening, but they've gone for the troll again. Um, they do have a 3 plus dodge available for the, the guy carrying the ball, but if that's failed, um, it's going to be making a mess of the attacking drive. Um, so it is failed first time. The team reroll, I think, sees it good. It does. But not really anywhere safe to go. Um, because I've got a goblin here who can reach and my blitzer who can reach, so that's two dice um, from those two players. Um, there's also this lineman um, who now can't assist, so that 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 um, putting that lineman there just stops that happening. Um, so I took the um, four plus really stupid there because I wasn't going to be able to stand anywhere next to the troll. I'd like to on his feet, um, so just just do it early and still get the chance. Uh, and he passed it and stood up as well. Um, which keeps both of those um, off where it is tied. And that is the boot carry down. Finally getting an armor break to, to stun the, uh, that line in. All ends up over here. Um, so here I can get yep, someone in contact with a troll to help him out next turn. Uh, Lyman back to to defend because I'd be expecting the Norse to try and gather the ball and push their attack down this way next turn, so I need bodies over here. So, uh, no effect, one dice block and throw a dodges away there and probably come and support this goblin. Yeah. <clears throat> so successful defence so far, uh, outnumbered and we've got the ball on the floor. So we're down to eight players and also down to nine still. Um, 
apothecary put in one of the uh, Norse back on the bench. So to reroll that one dice, that's the last reroll for the Norse this half. And one dice on the troll, which is a pushback, and then of course has to follow up into two dice. Um, but that is okay for a block off Werner. Um, with a couple of both downs. Could have made that a blitz and then maybe gone to dodge uh, 3 plus 3 plus to get the ball in hands. So that's a 2 plus really stupid failed after the last turn's uh, 4 plus 1 succeeding. Uh, and again another pushback for my uh, my big blitzer. Here, hopefully, get yet. Yeah, so, it tackles only on the ball and gives me two dice. Uh, oh no, what I thought was two dice at the time, I think, or was I just trying to risk the one dice? I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, if that had been a knockdown, my blitzer could have um, maybe got round and, and uh, threatened the ball. He said I'd just throw a goblin through loads of tackle zones, a um, bit of stunty shenanigans, made all the dodges, and then picked up the ball on a reroll and, uh, and gets away with it there. So the Norse have, have got an easy two dice on this, this of off wearing is unmarked and just come around here. It's not a block player. Um so I I couldn't get the ball safe anywhere. But I did get away from uh tackle players being able to hit him. Um and my only hope is a is a unsuccessful dodge, uh, which is just pushbacks or a or attack her down. Um but also it's because it's the Norse's attacking drive, it the onus is on them to score. So if they want the ball they've got to come and get it. Um, that's a very unwelcome knockout on the, the Mighty Blown Claw Blitzer. Um, so sorry, they've got this big important move. Um, no rerolls left. Um, but the main thing they need to do this turn is blitz this ball carrier. Um, which is left kind of till last. But down at the first time of asking, still had, still had Frenzy if it was just a pushback first time. But then catches the ball, so... A nice five plus catch for that bouncing ball, uh, and the Alpha and, uh, looks pretty odds on to score here. Only player I've got who can really reach is this goblin who's prone on the ground. Uh, Billion's big moment. Um, what actually happens uh, in in this turn is my favourite moment of the game. I'll just uh, I'll just say that and leave it there. So that that one's just uh, oh no, it was assisting there. I thought I was going to hit the other lineman. Yeah, here we go. Favourite moment of the game. Uh, two dice uphill block. He's successful. Um, so he's made, made a couple of dodges to do that as well. Knocks down the ball carrier. Two straight pile on him. Then goes to try and watch the ball. Needs to throw a couple of go for it. Uh, fails that one. And we see another double one come up here. Um, but leading to the most tragic of ends after a brilliant play. Uh, as as uh, Billiam the Goblin is no more. Um, which is a real shame because, yeah, that, that blitz uh, was heroic stuff and then uh, a gravely ignominious ending or whatever you call it <laughs> afterwards. Um, so Norse can score here still. They've got um, they've got someone in the end zone. Now they need to chuck him the ball. This lineman's probably their best shot of doing that, I think. Um, we can get this goblin out of the way. Uh, and then we've got... 3 plus pick up and I think that looks like a 5 plus pass. No more moves left. Um, it throws an inaccurate ball and it doesn't make it to the target. And that ends the half. Is that the half or just uh, just the Norse's chances of scoring there? Yeah, half. So, get a block from the troll. Um, and then I think I set up two more two dice blocks for these players so assist in there blitz from this blitzer and then assist there uh, so it's another pushback and then the thrower can uh, can take a pop at that lineman with two dice and that will be I think the last action of the half so very few underworld players left on the pitch at the end as you can see and that's something I'm sort of becoming used to with this team um, it doesn't get any easier though <laughs> uh, and is, is a big reason why I've been finding them hard work this season just, just sort of feels like a constant uphill battle. Uh, but all three knockouts coming back is very helpful. Um, knocked out Berserker comes back too. Um, so the Norse have all their players available. 
Uh, we'll switch ends because I'm attacking this half. Um, so I'm on 11 players, but I have no bench anymore. Um, Norse, uh, we 12 players have, have their bench now. So this um, movement 5 alignment seems to be sitting out, or is sitting out this turn, this half, um, when they're defending. I think if you've got a movement penalty lineman, they're probably... Um, they're going to be less, it's not they're more effective on defence, but they're less effective attacking than they are defending. So if you were going to sit him out for a half, um, probably when you're, when you're attacking would be the one. So having him sit out for the first half would have made a bit more sense. Um, so a quick zap here, and I, I highlighted this a few times, but where you stand players one square back from the halfway line, if a quick snap's rolled, you're, you're giving up more blocks. Um, but the only two players I could effect with that um, a straight four of Rollers um, and I don't have the block life to be able to throw to them uh, and to make that worthwhile so I'm not going to be taking that opportunity here um, should maybe have tried to hit these guys um, for, for an extra lineman but then I'm relying on getting getting knocked downs and following up and, and making sure I can do that one thing I definitely did want to capitalize on though is these um, berserkers right on the halfway line and near the touch line so I can surf one of those. Um, I'd need a blitz to do it, so I can only get one of them. Um, but I'll be looking at this lineman, two dice here, to push back. Um, probably there, I think. Follow up, uh, a goblin in there, and then another goblin can blitz uh, through there. Sort of dod uh, I think it'll be a stunty dodge uh, to, to then two dice blitz off, off the side of the pitch. And that's exactly what I'm aiming for with that player there. Um, and I'd always look for that opportunity. Um, if I had a frenzy player, that's, that's who'd be there. Uh, if I had two frenzy players, it would be the same, same on the other flank. Um, but all I'm doing with this quick snap, because I have no, uh, no one to um, effectively mark by stepping forward one, I just got my throw a bit close to the ball and put a third player in the wide zone uh, over there. Um, there was no stepping into the, the opponent's half would have been necessary. Shouldn't have followed up with my troll there because it meant I had to move this, um, this lineman over and waste his turn. Just getting, uh, getting an assist. Uh, some awful block dice there. Another double skulls we've had. Uh, and here we go. We have that play. Um, the attempted surf. Um, and having this lineman here is quite effective um, protection from the surf on this goblin. Um, but I needed the assist in there. To, to get that through. And that's the same berserker who was knocked out in the first half. Um, goes again, pushed off the pitch by a goblin. Um, something to not share with his teammates down the mead hall later. Um, so go grab the ball. Uh, but another double one. Uh, I think the third one we've seen now. Um, and the ball, ball on the floor. So I don't think any of the Norse can reach it um, without making a hole here, um, which this old Werner could certainly do. Um, but yeah, have this berserker forwards, um, putting pressure on next turn, so I have to pick up the ball and do something next turn to make it safe. Um, and then the double pushback here will have to use diagonals because this goblin is in the way. Um, and that, but that knocks out the lineman anyway, so still a removal. Um, so, sir. Yeah, debut appearance for that lineman as well. So he played his part in the surf uh, and then got knocked out. Um, don't think he did really anything in the first half. Uh, one dice on the troll. Um, it's just a pushback. And I think we're going to see some one dice on goblins here. That's my level. Uh, my agility four. Goblin out. Knocked out again. Second time in the game. And then just to push back on that one. Oh no, tackle. It's another knockdown. Another knockout. So, a uh, very, very effective turn from the Norse. Uh, knocking out three players. Putting me down to eight players for my attacking drive. Which I now want to be quite a quick drive. Um, and because I had to do something with the ball. And this goblin over here who blitzed the uh, berserker off the, um, off the pitch in the, the last turn. Was unmarked and available. I always get to him. Get him as far up the pitch as possible. Had a quick pause while I checked how far these players could go. Uh, and there he's completely out of reach uh, of this lineman who I was particularly concerned about. Who, um, before the go for it, um, with two go for it's of his own, could have 
uh, could have marked this goblin. And then I don't want to have to be dodging away from a tackle player. So there he's completely out of reach uh, and can score next turn if he has to. Um, but can't be touched this turn without some um, careful chain pushing uh, and manipulation of the pitch uh, from the Norse. Um, and if they if they manage to work that, they've, they've kind of earned it. Um, so Blitz on two dice just for a pushback and um, puts this player right in front of my troll. And then we've got move it around here just to do a bit of screening off. Um, see if I can hold this up another turn, it might be a good idea. I don't like doing that usually. Um, I'd rather just score and then put up a defence, um, which I'm, I've said before. Um, so, lots of those coming forwards, targeting this goblin. So, if, if they're going to be blitzing with the ult were enough. Only actually need one assist to make this three dice. Um, but have three, which is a bit of a waste of one player's action. So there was more, more that could have been done from these. We could have had players a bit further back over here, um, or just someone putting this assist in uh, instead of throwing that go for it with the off runner. Um, yeah, only only need one assist for three dice there, and there could have been a bit more pressure on the ball from the other players. This lineman is still two, four, six. Still two go for it from um, from putting the blitz down. So I can feel like I can take a bit of a risk by um, by looking at a mighty blow claw hit on the self wearer. Um, but put that screener in there doesn't prevent this um, this one from getting the blitz on him at one. Um, but I'm going to take my two dice hit. <coughs> um, which comes off. For a knockout. So that's the first removal core Mighty Blow players had, um, and it's turn 11, so <coughs> not being especially effective. Um, but I do put that touchdown in rather than risk waiting another turn. And uh, we are 1 0 up. Um, that's the first star player points for that goblin, who's um, well, surf surfed the Berserker and then scored, so he's having quite a good game. my knockouts back I think that's the agility 4 one who stayed out both the Norse knockouts back so only just got that off wearing off the pitch but he basically hasn't missed any turns and uh, we are back to defending so down players of course I'm now on 10 players Norse are on 11 they've still got their whole squad um, or they, they have a lineman missing the game I think but they're the whole squad they brought to this game <clears throat> uh, and I get a perfect defence so can step away from the players they wanted to hit with here um, put in a player they're going to struggle to get two dice on and then some goblins over here uh, I don't need all three of these oh, I'll take the troll back off the line Okay. then use the troll over here to screen more valuable players I think, I think that's how this comes out so a bit of a screen of more expendable players and then the more valuable ones behind. Uh, they'll struggle to get a that blitzer in there as well. Um, uh, am I leaving it like that? I believe I am. Yeah. Uh, where's the ball landed? Oh, it's a touchback. Yeah, that's why I couldn't see where it's landing. Um, and it's gone straight to the block of Werner, who's going to be the most difficult to get the ball off of. Um, so good from that point of view, although they're probably better candidates to score with, because um, this um, this guy's already level. Uh, another three star player points isn't going to help him as much as it with somebody else. Goblin being pushed back and then knocked down, um, which does step that old Werner into his contact with this Blitzer, so I may be looking to get a couple of assists. Um, that's a no another knocked out goblin. Uh, it's pushing back down to nine players. So we'll be looking as it stands. If both of these goblins stand up, I've just got I've got two dice and that off Werner. Um, so this off Werner could have been uh, 
potentially a better scoring candidate, someone to throw the touch back to. Because um, going up to five star player points would be very helpful to put him a casualty away from leveling. Um, I think there is, there's like a four point lineman around. Uh, yeah, so this one, who was at the back to retrieve the ball? Um, might be some other, there's five point lineman. Berserker's doing. One of the Berserkers is on 12 points, so it might have been good to grab a touchdown on. Um, but yeah, this the block of Werner is definitely the player I would struggle. To, I'm, I'm going to struggle to get the ball off of the most. Um, so I'm just dropping a couple of assists in here because um, I'm planning on two dice hit with um, with my th my thrower because this um, berserk has block. Um, I need um, two assists to make that two dice. Following up because I want another assist in here so my troll can get three dice on this berserker. So I'm throwing my blitz here. Um, taking the pushback because again the mighty blow claw blitzers rolled another pushback uh, and then puts that second assist in for three three dice troll block which is a knockdown um, so I stayed there I, cho I think I chose to stay there to protect these players but I think following up would have been better because it would have marked that marked that berserker because um, we've jump up this berserker can go and put his guard anywhere he wants um, but if the troll's standing next to him, he's got to dodge first, which I don't think he'd necessarily want to do. Um, it'd been yeah, much better sort of pitch control move to, to follow up there. So solid cage over there. It's going to be hard to break down. Um, I could just try and throw a goblin in there, but I've got a tackle player to try and get through. Um, and that's a goblin knocked down anyway, so I'll probably be looking at trying to chip off a cage, a cage corner if I can there's a diving tackle there as well so I'm almost certainly not going to be wanting to dodge through there and that's a pushback and not a lot there so troll wasn't going to be hitting anyone might as well just move him um, mark up a couple of those players Including the guy he killed earlier. Um, so his thrower has two dice. And that is a knockdown. A couple of dice on this guy, so enough double skulls there. Re roll to pushbacks. I think that's our third double skulls. Three double skulls, three, three ones re rolled into one so far. Uh, it's goblin dodging over there for uh, for an assist on this berserker, <clears throat> which is a knockdown. And then I go a bit dangerous on my on my blitzer here, who I'm usually looking to protect, but I've put him there to get an assist for this two dice block. But that comes up with double both downs, which is no good, and that's left my my blitzer vulnerable. Now, some of my opponent missed here, um, which I often miss as well the jump up skill so this berserker I think is in the middle of, of, of jumping up at the moment or it might be something else happening but he could use jump up and it's a two plus a two plus roll based on agility um, to just stand up and block this blitzer which then leaves this blitzer available to move where he wants um, to run up blitzers their berserkers um, but yeah that's that's something they have on but they do just stand um, stand this berserker up it's gonna come later I think started with this off where enough um, uh, so double skulls for the Norse. Um, first one I remember seeing. That, no, there was one one earlier. Uh, but yeah, so this this berserker who just stood up there um, has now basically spent his whole turn just just standing up to put an assist down. Where jump up allows you to do much more. Um, and it obviously there's there's a risk if you roll a one on the jump up roll. Um, he just stays prone. Um, but I think it's worth the two plus roll to just just block this guy, and then you've got this berserker available to go to go do something else. Um, and he could have pushed back to there to still get assists on the second one, uh, but they've got a knockdown on the on the big blitzer. Uh, Scuttle Snick. I should try and remember some of these names. I remember Barry's name all the time. But, uh, yeah. So if they had had that other other berserker available, could then have come and stood in uh, perhaps in here to get another assist on the troll. Because so I think they're about to throw one dice, um, which comes up as a skull. Um, 
And it was that was that uh, diving tackle lineman who Barry killed earlier on. Uh, so here, I know they've also got three turns left. Um, and if they're going to be scoring and getting the draw out of the game, they, they've got to be next turn looking at moving the ball forwards because they're not quick enough to go from there to the end zone in two turns. Um, so next turn, they have to move down here. I can't see them going down the other wing. Um, so I've got to start looking at getting players into the middle or over to cover this wing. Um, so I think pretty much all of my movement is going that way. Um, so using my Mighty Blow Claw Blitzer, um, getting nothing out of it again. And I think he's back here to next turn, come down this way and turn after, hit somebody over here. But he's also in a position to mark this lineman and make sure he's going to stay out of the game effectively next turn. Uh, Goblin grabbing a knockout on an off Werner. Um, and that is, I think, I think that was Diesel, who's uh, yeah having a great game. So surfed a berserker for a knockout, scored a touchdown, and now has knocked out an old Werner as well. Um, Barry grabs a knockdown there, and now this is the turn the Norse have to push down here. So I'm expecting to see the ball move this way, um, and I have four unmarked players here ready to come over and make it uh, get in their way next turn. Um, so that lineman does stand up, and that's all he can really do with this turn. Um, could have tried to dodge out there on a three, but that's a risky move. Um, and that means I'll be looking at getting him an assist next turn, which will actually draw draw a player away from where I want them. Um, but I'll be yeah trying to use as many players as I can to come and get in the way of this advancing little cage of uh, of Norse next turn. So it's Goblin Assist for my Blitzer. Uh, and then moving down here, I'm lining up this as my Blitz uh, with my Thrower. Um, coming from there rather than there because I want I want him standing there. So if this ends up being a both down, um, which would be no effect with both having block, um, my throw would be where I want him, right in the way. And then I'm positioning this Goblin behind um, in an attempt to use Frenzy against this off Werner. So it makes it um, another push, another pushback for the big blitzer, but the the sort of most immediate way out is using this off wearing a strength to to use it to be the one who blitzes through and makes a hole. But if it's going to blitz one of these players, um, it's going to be following up into a goblin, which might make the second block harder. But also because um, yeah, so using frenzy against him means. Um, He's going to be marked when he's finished blocking, so he's going to have to dodge away. And off warriors don't want to be dodging. So that's why that goblin is there, specifically. Um, I think the only real way around it would be blitzing from that square on my thrower, and then making sure you get the second hit, which would move him away. Um, so really the goblin should perhaps have been there instead. Uh, and this, yeah, this blitz was positioned to make this a space you can get through without dodging. But yeah, going for that blitz on the thrower gets a knockdown with the first hit, and then has to follow up so it's marked, um, but makes a dodge, and so it's not not a good dodge roll uh, for for an off Werner, um, but he made it uh, and did what he needed to, and one dice over there for a knockdown on that goblin, and then we got a dodge away from the troll. Uh, and the second one, um, which is fouled, but I think it's successful on the reroll. Yep. So much like, um, much like in the first half, we've also got an off Werner on the ball in scoring position um, with one turn. Who's going to score next turn? And I have to do something about it. Um, so now I've got this prone thrower with block, who is the obvious one to actually make the hit, because this blitzer was effectively marked out of the game. Isn't going to be able to do anything this turn. Um, I've got one assist here from this goblin, and I was trying to decide. Um, actually, I'll set up set up the uh, positioning a bit better. But basically, I was trying to decide for a little while: do I want to dodge this lineman for a second assist, or do I just want to take one dice and perhaps save the reroll for that? Um, that was an annoying failed, really stupid. Because as part of my planning ahead, I wanted these linemen. Uh, marked up so I was just going to put the troll in there to mark all three of them um, and then and that means they have to work harder to get down and help out 
what the situation down here might be. But failed really stupid, scuppered that. So this lineman, that was part of my decision as well, is this lineman has to hold back these three Norse. Um, so I went with one dice, uh, which is a pushback, um, and then reroll to to a, um, uh, a pal. So I've got him down. Um, part of the decision on one dice as well was I had this off where and a marked. So what would probably happen if this um, this throw had thrown a skull um, was that this off where and is still marked, and he probably would have blitzed through this goblin and then just round to score. Um, but the other alternatives were. Um, well, if I'd taken the pushback, that's kind of where he'd have been anyway. I could have pushed him back there and then, or or there, and then stood that side to make it hard for the off wearer to get out. Um, but again, he probably would have still just blitzed through the goblin and got his way out. So on the reroll, it's one in three that I knocked him down and dropped the ball on the floor. Um, or uh, one in six that it goes really wrong and then the off wearer is still marked. Um, so, but but use the reroll, knocked him down. Um, and then the ball is there, so I could have picked it up, but decided instead to just stand there and make it difficult for the Norse to grab the ball. Because um, that is a 5 plus pickup for a Norse, 6 plus for an off -wearer. Um And they can only get rid of one of those players. Um, that's a, a foul dodge at the end there for a, another injured goblin. Um, one Norse turn left, still haven't thrown the Apothecary at anybody. Um, just in case a blitzer or, or a thrower gets injured in this last turn. Um, so, yeah, I think what I'm also trying to do there is at least push this guy back over here so that these two linemen can come into the game without dodging. Um, and then perhaps come and blitz this thrower. I think we see the thrower blitz at some point. I think the um, optimal play here might have been blitzing with this off wearing it on this goblin to at least move him away from the ball and hopefully knock him over. Um, and then spend the rest of his movement running into the end zone to be a potential scoring threat. Um, it would be a four plus catch if you got the ball to him. Then I think move away this lineman, uh, probably from this one. So if you start with a pushback, he's there, but then these two linemen can come round uh, and be involved. Um, but yeah, they do need to get these linemen free. And I think at this point they're going to have to dodge at least one of them. Um... Yeah, okay, that one's back there. It's, but that, so that would give you enough with the off and the Blitz in the Goblin away from the ball and then getting the off it in the end zone. You've got this one who can come pick up on a 4+, plus, dodge away, get the ball to the off it to score. Uh, I think he's probably what I might have gone with. Um, but I have instead Blitz in the Thrower. Um, and I think the Goblin's the better one to take down because it's more in the way once you've got the ball. Um, oh, I'm going to pause it here because, right, so what happened here is the game completely messed up. Uh, we, do, so we don't know what happened. Um, I'm going to clear all the advances and stuff off, actually, so we can see what's happening better. Let's leave the grid up. Uh, there we go. Right, um, so this, this North Lyman is about to come pick up the ball on a 4+, plus, um, and he's successful in doing that. And then the game ends, um, and we don't know we don't know what happened um, basically, the, my opponent was looking at what to do next and was going to just try and run it in with this lineman. Um, I think the best thing he had to do was 4 plus dodge there, 3 plus dodge there, and then he needed uh, to, to move 6 and then go for it once. Um, he was actually looking at a path around this way, which is very similar, but it was two go for it. Um, so that way it was slightly better. Um, but because he had to go around the prone off where it was an extra square of movement. Um, but as he was working out what he was going to do and was about to click it, the, the screen went blue. Um, in that way that it does uh, near the end of the game, where it looks like oh, the game's the game's about to end, um, and I, so I thought he'd clicked it and then he'd failed like the next roll or something, um, but he hadn't, and then he hadn't done it. The game just ended, and um, then we thought uh, I wasn't watching the clock. Did the timer run out? And he's like, no, there's still like fifty something seconds, um, and it was all very odd, and we don't know what happened. Uh, and really we'll never know if this lineman was about to run in because um, when we came back to check in the, the replay, uh, that was all we saw. So very odd end into the game. Um, uh, I, uh, there are accusations of bribes to cyanide. I don't know uh, how, how I'd pull that off or um, if it would be worth it. Um, but, but that was how the game finished, um, which is a real shame that it, it ended that way because I'd like to have seen if they, they'd pull that off. Um, 
but there we go. Um, there were no no levels for the Norse. Um, MVP landed on an already leveled Lyman. It does put him moving a touchdown of a second level. Um, so Diesel, who I think is rightfully MVP after the game, he had two knockouts and a touchdown. Um, yeah, grabbed the MVP and leveled. Um, so uh, block succeeded. Comparison very obviously can always be in favour of the Norse. Um, that's what you'd expect, and they got they got more removals as a result. Um, and yeah, I was like I <coughs> mentioned during the game, was outnumbered for most of it, which is becoming very familiar um, with Underworld. Um, pretty low, pretty low star player point count for everyone. I did level two players though, which was nice. Um, and yeah, dice dice felt a bit horrible to me a lot of the time. I mentioned there were like. Um, Sort of a few double ones coming up, sort of failed go for it. So, uh, where am I go for it? Yeah, so all of these go for it rolls were just that was just two attempts, those four failures. One of them resulted in a goblin dying uh, after pulling off a brilliant play. Um, and then there was, um, what was it the pickups as well? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, I think all of the, there was a two, two of these failures were one pickup attempt and then um, the other two were re-rolled. So I only actually tried to pick up the ball three times, but failed four of those. Um, yeah, f four failed rows off of three three attempts uh, is what I just said. Um, really stupid, but okay in this game. Um, stuff like, yeah, not very many successful blocks. I think it was, um, yeah, the player I was hoping the most for out of, out of blocking. This is the Mighty Blow Claw Blitzer. Um, just so many pushbacks. Uh, all through the game and only broke armor I think twice uh, for one stun and one knockout so wanted more from him and he kind of needs to um, to carry the team a bit more than that um, and keep those numbers a bit even uh, to, yeah, to, to help me with um, losing players all the time but it didn't work in this game grabbed a 1-0 win anyway um, and that was the, that was the last game we saw we saw all these three other games uh, where we covered this uh, Kenry Lizardman one earlier in the week um, so the final leaderboard looks like this. So I do I do jump over uh, the Monster Mash into fifth. Don't make the playoffs. Um, have the same record as the the uh, other North team in the league who beat me, um, but they have a much better touchdown difference. I think I'm working it out. I needed to win by six touchdowns to overtake them, um, and that was not going to happen. Um, yeah. So that's 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 how we uh, we finished the regular season. We're going to the playoffs now. We have two different playoffs. So the top four play sort of uh, first versus fourth, second versus third in the semi-finals. Uh, and then we do the same for the bottom half. So they have uh, our own separate playoffs. Fifth against eighth, sixth against seventh. Uh, in three seasons, this is the first time I've been in the bottom floor playoff, um, which, is a, which is a shame, but it's all right. Uh, still plenty to play for. Um, and so I beat two of these other teams... 1-0 both times uh, and then um, drew with the Necromantic so it's going to be yeah it's going to be close I think all of these games are going to be quite close there's there was um, the only win the Norse had were against the Necromantic team they're meeting next um, and the only wins the Halfling had were against this Norse team so lots of uh, lots of results up for grabs in this bottom four top four the Chaos Dorse are kind of running away for it and would be would be favourites here they played um, Manly Men in Purpley Pants this week and won 3 0. Um, and then, yeah, Elizabeth and Kemery also played this week. Uh, so they're both going straight into playing each other again. Um, Elizabeth won that one 2 1. That's the one we saw earlier in the week. Um, but that's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see if there's any reversals in those fixtures and who, who makes the final. We've had um, in both seasons so far, the team that finished top of the regular season hasn't won it. Um, so Roughbeard looking to, to change that. And I think probably will um, with the way this season's been developing. And this team are, are, are a long way ahead. And the, co the coach is really good as well. It's not like just like, oh, he's got the best team. It's like, um, no, the coach is, is quite new to the game. And coached the Elven Union team we had in the first two seasons and did re really well with them as well. So obviously he's picked up the game well and he's good at it. It's not just like uh, the skills his players has. Um, but yeah, that is how that is how we finished. Uh, for the regular season um, and we've got we've got playoffs to come uh, so we'll, we'll have a look at those next week um, we're going to be going straight into those um, so the Sons of Mischief no levels from that last game like I said 
<coughs> so, but only change to their roster is they had a, a, an injured lineman, so they're back up to 13 players for the semi-final against uh, the Necromantic team. Um, and yeah, the, there they are. So a couple of players close to a level, so this tackle lineman could grab another one. Uh, yeah, some some other linemen quite close to another level. Uh, they'd like, I'm sure they'd like to get this off where up to six points. Uh, and my team, so I had two two levels from that game. I hired uh, hired a new goblin, Nigel with a Y, uh, to replace Billiam. Um, which puts me back on 14 players. I have my other thrower back next game as well. Um, but the levels I took were so guard on the on the troll. Um, considered uh, was considering tentacles or claw um, because they have mutations available on, on uh, normal advances I'm kind of wishing already I'd taken claw because um, the mighty blow claw, mighty blow claw combo um, is effective for removal players though we didn't really see it in the last game from this guy but um, and I, I need I need more of that uh, really with the amount of players I lose I need a sort of a bit of a leveller in that way to try and yeah, have have loads lo, loads of players taken off of the other team as well to try and keep it, keep it a bit even. Um, but guard is going to be useful. I think it's going to be more useful all around for the team. Although every time he loses his tackle zone, it's not going to do anything. Um, but yeah, I've gone guard. Uh, other advance I had was uh, diesel player of the match. Grabbed two heads. Now looks absolutely hideous. I hate this animation. But two heads is too useful not to do. So all his dodges are on two plus. Um, squeezing through all the gaps that I send him through uh, and that is uh, yeah that's how we stand um, and we have uh, Harry Seacombs the halfling team next week uh, in the playoff semi-finals and we'll be back then <laughs>